Some dude came to the base and the people are all happy now for some reason. They call him Reverend. He dresses like a priest. It's a cult. Amy could now clearly hear the voice. But it wasn't what she was expecting. <laughs> it was Alan Carr. <laughs> Hiya, Amy, you're right. <laughs> Hello, Amy. <laughs> Benny. Come on, Benny. I should have just said no, but she was pushing for a finger in and I felt bad. Before I could react, thin, cold fingers grabbed my shoulder. <laughs> Welcome to Episode 54 of Ghost Hands. Hands. I'm so that was good. <laughs> that was very intense being a part of it. Yeah. It was very good. We're on. Um, I love an orchestrated opener. Yeah. Just so everyone knows, it is going to be the same energy as last time because for us, this is two minutes later. <laughs> Your, those nipples. Nippy, nippy, nip, nip. They do look like nipples. Um, I've decided this is my new colour palette. What do you think? What? Brown? This, it's not brown. It's not brown. It's brown. It's not brown. It's brown. What's brown about that? It's, gr- it's, green. it's, it's brown. green. It's green. Brown. It's green. It looks like that. Da- Are you kidding? It looks like baby shit. Okay, get out. <laughs> it's time for you to get out. And I don't podcast. know how you dare. Oh, wear sorry. That. You're still yapping. I don't know how you it's dare. It's my podcast now. Tell me that my sequin dress <laughs> looks like a turd. Oh, okay. Oh, my uh, baby. You haven't got over sequin it. Sequin dress is a turd. That and is, you've put that on. That's what this is about, isn't yeah. it? You still haven't gone over it. Big time. So listen, um, I'm, I'm not talking to you right now, Han. I'm talking to the listeners. Mm. You gotta leave. Mm. Um, Guys, if your friend so sends you a link to a dress that they're thinking of buying, mm. should you A, be honest, or B, tell them what you they think they want to hear? Because I think honesty is a more friendly Maybe thing to exactly do. that's exactly what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it is. I, I can believe. The way you're, how high your voice is going. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah is fuming because she no, sent me. No, I'm joking. Me, I've got the exact same t-shirt. She sent me a like turd that. brown dress. And I said to her. Turd. Okay. Maybe I do, no. There's too much judgment in that. She sent me a brown dress, and brown. she said, "It's a brown." What do you dress. think of it? And I just said, "Brown." My only response in the WhatsApp okay. message was brown, and then okay. Hannah lost her mind and went, "Actually, you should tell people that." And then she got all um, that. It's that she got all ratty about it. Was it. that colour? So everyone go on Spotify now and have a look at that. Right? <clears throat> so Susie says, "Let me go to the message." <laughs> I just said brown. She I didn't say brown. Yeah, and then Hannah read into all of this like sass and shade I that so I was annoyed. giving her, and I was like, "All you've sent me is that I'm just I'm just saying the colour." I personally, personally, don't like brown. Well, why have you got that on then? Uh, it's not brown. It is though. It's a it's a what shade a, of brown. That is, um, it's it the, is green as well, but it is a shade of brown. It's all ol- it's olive. <sighs> I mean, I like it because I do like that colour. I've got um, trousers in a very similar colour, and I've and I've got that top. Just long it's sleeves. kind of like Kardashian khaki, isn't it? Kardashians are just obsessed. I hate them. With, do, I love them. I hate them. Love them. I think they're the downfall of society. They and probably we're all are doomed. But do you know what? Actually, I can't. I don't think it's on them. Like, if you have if you have the opportunity to go and make a life like that that you want, I think fair enough. It's everybody else. It's us. We're the problem. No, I think they peddle the problem, and I think it it's become so much now that they can't see the. Demise of society. God, we really oh have my. gone political. No, I, I listen as if I have enough brain power I, to, look, to, I just, to properly break look, down. I just, I have to admit, problem. I love watching Courtney and Kim up around. It's my, it's my guilty pleasure. <gasps> I got into selling sunset. Have you seen it? No. Oh, don't do it. Do not do it to yourself. Don't. Whatever you do, don't watch Sally. Sunset. I know that one of them's um, a criminal. What? Hmm. Oh, thanks. Spoiler alert. No, I, I don't watch it. There's no spoiler there because I don't know what I'm on about. But I know that one of them, I think, is, um, I think, going to serve time in prison. I, listen, oh, no, someone back no, no, me no, up. No, 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 you're talking about the Real Housewives. Of, oh, am I? Um, yeah, of Salt Lake City, which is also a great program. Um, mindless TV is something that I really like to unwind with. Mm, of it re- genuinely is. There's nothing wrong with that. And Sally and Sunset is one of the best things I've ever watched because it satisfies my like. My um, real estate 
addiction, right, to looking at nice houses. Mm -mm. And it, there's also drama. It's fabulous. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. I probably will get into there it is at a some house. Point. There is a house in LA and it's it's selling for forty million pounds. And all the way around it, it's in the Hollywood Hills, all it's the way around sick. it. No, listen to this, this is my favourite bit. All the way around, there's like um a swimming pool that just goes all the way around like the river rapids. Oh, like a lazy river. Like a lazy river. How amazing is yeah, that? Yeah, but you're you love a bit of I pool. Love the wet. You yeah, you yeah, exactly. Like uh, like open water <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. I think I, you, I think anyone who you could be sold anything as long as there was some water involved. You fucking buy it. Yeah, a puddle in the backyard. Yeah. If it's been raining recently, I'll buy it. Yeah, some sort of shady. Oh no, completely. Because every could get every, you on board so on, fast. Every time on Selling Sunset, there's a house that's like in the million. I mean, they're always in the millions, always. But when there's a house that's in the millions and they haven't got a pool, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you mm -hmm. fucking doing? Mm -hmm. What are you? You're in LA. It's hot all the time. Agreed. Why wouldn't you have a fucking pool? Oh, it just you should you should watch it. In fact, for the houses because they are just amazing. I know, but I think I'd get a bit like oh, I want it. Yeah, it just makes you ambitious though. Makes you like I'm like I need to make I need to make some. I need to make money. my millions. Yeah. I need to make, and I'm gonna. Do you know what? I've got it in my head that I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a millionaire. Have you manifested I don't know how. it? Don't know where. Well, I reckon if if you manifest it, then I'll share in that. You want to come over? Well, no, I just think your success is my success, my success is your success. That's true, actually. We we're are, intertwined now, We're bitch. a double act. We're <laughs> yeah. a double act. Yeah, so in a way, your pool is my pool. Mi yeah. casa es su casa. Okay, well, you, you, you need to buy a house with a pool as well, then. Mi piscina es Because I'm not coming round if you haven't got a pool. I'm not. I I, well, I know that. Why have I got the mic so high? God, that's a bit I don't know. I can't get comfortable today. Okay. Okay, you ready for a tarot? Yes, please. Mm. Pick it. What you got? Gonna go for this one. I've Can you chuck me the book? Chuck at book. I had a really weird dream last night about Stella Black. Oh. Mm. Okay, yes. It's the Seven of Pentacles, I think. Oh. It's not like it's not good. It's a man with shoulders too big for his head, a very long body. Which is very not. In is he resting himself on a He's stick? He's resting on a carrot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. It doesn't look great. Actually, oh god, Hannah, Hannah, oh. bitch, cough, ski. Oh, hit me. This couldn't be more apt for oh. what you've just been saying. Really? This bloke oh, is god. planting seeds for the future. <gasps> oh my! It encourages. He's, he's resting on a hoe. <laughs> Aren't we all? Can you please make a note that this episode is called Resting on a Hoe? Yeah. And the other one is called Because oh, I'm resting again. on you, you're resting on me. We're yeah. resting on a hoe. Yeah, we're resting on hoes. It encourages looking at long term investments. Fuck off. Yeah. But put you know it what? in its stand. I've got goosebumps. That's insane, isn't it? Goosebumps. So this podcast is planting seeds for our future. And he's just, he's hoeing. Oh, he rested on a hoe. All we've been doing whilst doing ghost hunts is hoeing. It's just hoeing now, hoeing later, hoeing We be before. hoeing. We be hoeing. We be we planting. <laughs> all the seeds, because we're going to be rich. Yeah. Going to be rich. Who sang that? Going to be hoeing dirty. Going to be oh, hoeing dirty. We can't dirty. do that because people have been taking the piss that we don't know the difference between Jay-Z and 50 Cent. <laughs> I don't know the difference. We got it mixed oh, up. Rappers are rappers. I've got no fucking rappers idea. Rappers be rapping. Well. I can't. They honestly, like from Eminem to Jay Z to that guy who to sings yay. Riding Dirty. To yeah, I've got no idea. Yay. Um. And who's that guy? Fat Joe. He's Fat Joe. Guy with the beard. Oh, as if I know. Come oh, on, I've mate. No I listen idea. to fucking Kylie. Oh, Kylie's album is actually really good. I don't like him. Yeah, well, you you need to stop saying that actually because it's I just offensive. think that like Cher. Stop. No, I just I think Cher is a better icon, and I won't hear another word about I it. I don't think you need to compare that they're two icons. I do they both think have I space. Do. <laughs> we're so ratty. We're so we're gonna have a rat. We're gonna have a fight after this. Outside. Um, would you like a story? No. <laughs> no, get out. <laughs> um, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have, we, there's a lot of tension between me and Susie. We're going to like have a <clears throat> bus stop in the car park. <laughs> we'll have a snog in car park. <laughs> we're going to fight or fuck. <laughs> fight or 
fuck? That is a thing, the though, new... that happens when you get men into a room. We're talking about men again. I'm so what do you mean? Like, that's what happens. It's like this. That, like, if you put loads of men in a room, they either fight or have sex with each other. Oh. Because, like, this is... Like, got a load of women together in a room. They'd be able to, like, you know, be civil like human beings. Oh, it's just a bunch of men together. Again, why am I talking about men again? I'm so sorry. I love men. Okay. Um... There's a woman I don't recognise in my wedding photos. Oh, my God. I first saw her in the photo of me walking up the aisle. The shot is from behind. The white train of my dress skims the ground. If this is a story about another woman in a white dress at a wedding, I'm going to lose my shit. Why? Because I hate it. What do you mean? Women wearing white at another woman's wedding. I think it's bang out of order. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Susie's done it. Yeah. <laughs> To a gay wedding, come I'm on. Fine. That's, no, that's fine. There was no bride. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah. That's not the same at all. Okay, good. Would you have done it if it was a bride? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, the white train of my dress skims the ground. My blonde hair is rolled up in the silver barrette borrowed from his mum. My something borrowed. Every person in the pews is turned, watching me. Except one. The woman in the last row stands stick straight facing away from the camera. All I can see is the back of her head. Straight, long, black hair flowing down her shoulders and ending at her waist. Jeff, who's that? Jeff leaned over my shoulder. Huh, don't know. Maybe your cousin Jamie? Could be, but her hair isn't that long. I clicked forward several photos. No, it can't be. Jamie was wearing a red dress. She's... This woman's wearing black. I shook my head. Must be someone from your side. She's sitting on your side, though. Hmm, guess you're right. I clicked the zoom button. Her form filled the screen. Stick straight, black hair, ivory skin. Almost impossibly skinny arms. She stood a good distance away from the five other people in the pew. My cousin Amanda, her husband, and her three rambunctious children, one of whom was picking their nose. Could she be the date of one of my guy friends? Like Jack, maybe? He was always dating a new girl. I quickly brought up his Facebook. Nope, his current girlfriend had curly hair and a beautiful brown complexion, not her. I don't recognise her. She's got to be a wedding crasher. Jeff and I had gotten married three weeks ago. We'd just gotten our wedding photos back. I braced myself for surprises, ones that made me look like I had a double chin or shots of my 60-year-old parents shaking it out on the dance floor, but I didn't expect this. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. This was our special day, and this rando thinks she can just come crash it. I'm sorry, Jeff. Well, she could have had the decency to look at me as I walked down the aisle, at least, mm. I grumbled. I clicked away from the photo, trying to forget about her and just enjoy the photos. A few more photos of the ceremony. She wasn't in them. I lingered on the photos of us and the bridal party, my heart glowing. Then I got to the reception. What do you mean? My heart glowing. What do you mean? As in, like, she's... Surely you should go and see a doctor. <laughs> yeah, um, it's glowing. Fluorescent um, green. Just I can see your heart. It's glowing. <laughs> Have you been to Chernobyl? Um, <laughs> had some of that goop. <laughs> oh, call cool back to another happy. Oh, then I got to the reception photos. She stuck out like a sore thumb. Oh, no. Standing there behind the table of my high school friends. Facing away from the camera, oddly still. That's her. I jabbed the computer screen so hard the image rippled. Well, obviously she'd be at the reception, free food. I'm surprised she went to the ceremony at all. I clicked to the next photo. She wasn't in it. I breathed a sigh of relief. No way. I zoomed in. My friend Libby, sitting at the table, had a glass of wine pressed to her lips. I flicked back to the previous photo. Libby was lifting the glass towards her lips. I love a glass of wine now. Oh, me too. I really love that. A very chilled peanut. Stop it, my mouth's watering. Sorry, no, we're going to we we're going to get done for that. Can we have one glass of wine after this? I've got time. Mm, one little we'll glass. We'll chat in a bit. <clears throat> one little glass. Maybe, but I've got to get back and... Quick glass. Just... 20 minutes. <laughs> Gordon's wine bar. Maybe. 20 minutes. <laughs> Libby was lifting the glass towards her lips. These two photos were taken within a few seconds of each other and she's just gone. Jeff shrugged. She's probably just got her food and... Jeff. Jeff, Jeff shrugged. Jeff, Jeff shrugged. Do you know who this is? This is the woman from my from my mate's wedding. The twat. Oh, yeah. <gasps> because she, I, I bet she's got a face on her like a smacked ass. Yeah. Like, just fucking haunting like upside, weddings. Like, an upside, like a mouth, yeah. like an upside down smile. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's quite creepy as well. It, yeah, she looks Nasty. creepy. Nasty. Yeah. She probably just got her food and skedaddled, Jeff said. I clicked through the next several photos. She wasn't in them. Feeling a little bit better, I clicked through to the rest and landed on a portrait of the two of us standing in the middle of the reception hall. Lovely. Look at us. Oh, you look beautiful. Oh, thank My breath caught in my throat. Oh, no. At the edge of the photo, there was a hand touching my shoulder. <gasps> oh! I hate that, that's vile. <coughs> <laughs> I've killed Anna. That's horrible. Just the tips of the fingers. Just the tip. <laughs> okay, fine, but just the tip. <laughs> You're literally such a child. <laughs> you done? That's not birth control, kids. Just the tips of the fingers, the rest out of view. Pale thin fingers oh. not thick ruddy ones like jeff's i stared <laughs> wow jeff hang on is this a, is this a couple called jeff and jess yeah <laughs> fuck jeff and jess that's quite jeff cute and jess and jeff's got sausage hands jeff yeah but i feel he's no thick ruddy male hands i think is quite fit mm. i think that's all right i've got thick ruddy male hands <laughs> like jeff, like jeff. you've got jeff hands <laughs> <clears throat> I stared at the computer, my heart pounded in my chest. Jess, are you okay? His voice sounded so far away. Her fingers, I said softly. Her fingers are on my shoulder. What? Jeff took the laptop, squinting at the screen. Surely that's just my hand, Jess. Your hands look nothing like that. Well, how can you tell? It's, it's just the tips of the fingers. Tips of a woman's fingers. No, they're obviously mine. No, they're not. I grabbed the laptop from him. I forced myself to look at the photo. Look, your arm is going down like it's wrapped around my waist. Your waist isn't even in the frame. Yeah, but you can tell from the angle. If your hand was resting on my shoulder like that, it, it would be up more. Jess, it's obviously my hand. He sighed and wrapped his arms around me. Speaking yeah, it's your hand if you like fucking Mr. Tickle. <laughs> yeah, creepy Mr. Tickle. Speaking in a softer tone, he said, Look, someone crashed our wedding. That sucks a lot. I think you're overreacting a little. Yeah, I don't care. I, sh I shot him a glare. Then I pulled out my phone and dialed Amanda's number. It took three rings for her to pick up. Amanda, who was sitting next to you at my wedding? Uh, hi, Jess. Shouldn't you know your own sitting plan, you daft bitch? Also, I'd be like, a hello would be hello. nice. <laughs> she said in her slow, southern That's how I to you, Jess. She slagged off my brown dress. And now... No, she's not got over it. Uh, <laughs> wow, turd dress. Hashtag turd, turd dress. dress. Turd. Um, oh, hi, Jess. Uh, well, you sat us with Uncle Bob and Aunt Margie. No, at the ceremony. Well, I was sitting alone, dear. I purposely chose to. I didn't want. Dear. Any... Yeah, didn't want my kids hassling anyone. No, there was a woman in the same pew as you. Tall, black hair. No, dear. It was just me and Will and the kids. I mean, at least I don't remember seeing anyone else. I talked to Amanda another ten minutes, then said I had to go. I collapsed on the couch next to Jeff, and I leant my shoulder against... Sorry. I leant my head against his shoulder. Jeff reached over and rubbed my shoulders. My eyes flickered closed, and my breathing slowed. Don't worry about it, babe. Don't worry about some woman creeping on you at your wedding. Look, it's all okay. I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't like Jeff's tone. The way he was speaking to me like some fragile, easily broken... The way he was speaking to me like I was something fragile and easily broken. I'm going to take a shower, I said, getting up from the sofa abruptly. I slammed the bathroom door behind me and started to run the water, peeled off my clothes and stared at myself in the mirror. Steam clouded up from the shower and I stepped in. The hot water hit my back, running down my body, and the stress began to fade away. Oh, I hope Mr. Longfingers comes in now. Don't what a collab. Don't shut your eyes also when you're shampooing. No, don't. I reached for the shampoo, scrubbed it in, rinsed it out, stood under the stream of water and let it run over my face for seconds, minutes. Then I turned off the water and began to step out. I glanced down and froze. Oh no. Collecting around the bath... A hand between her legs. Collecting around the bathtub drain was a tangled clump of black hair. Disgusting. Before I could react, thin, 
Cold fingers grabbed my shoulder, ah! pushed. I slipped on the wet ceramic, my body falling with a painful crack. Pain shot through my body like fire. As I pulled myself up, grimacing in pain, eight words repeated in my head. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. The silver barrette I borrowed from Jeff's mum. The one she insisted I borrow, saying it was a family heirloom. She said that Jeff's sister refused to wear it, and it would mean the world to her if I carried out the tradition. The one that had a few straight black oh. hairs stuck in it. The end. Oh my God, who was it? Well, 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 well. <laughs> well, I thought Huge that was question. a great story, actually. Do you think that that is... So hang on, is that Jeff's mum said that Jeff's sister refused to wear it? Now she's like, you wear it. Yeah, maybe so they So Jeff's mum's a creepy... Creepy bitch. Creepy C. Mm. Wow. It was still a bit fucking weird. So it's a family heirloom, but like, ooh, oh, some creepy I going on I don't know there. if it is. I think it could just be... Uh, creepy, eh? Yeah. Where the fuck am I? Yeah, that was really good. Thank I really you. enjoyed that. Thank you. I really enjoyed that. Aww. The night I played hide and seek with a killer. Oh. It was a regular Tuesday night. My parents were away and I had the house to myself. I was chilling on the couch, binge watching a series, when I noticed something odd outside my living room window. The street was dimly lit, but I could make out a figure lurking near my neighbour's house. At first, I thought it might be one of their friends or a family member, you know, someone they were expecting. But the longer I watched, the more uneasy I became. This person was just standing there, staring at their front door. Oh. It gave me the creeps, but being the rational person I am, I dismissed it as my imagination running wild. As the night progressed, I got up to grab a snack from the kitchen. That's when I heard a creak. A subtle noise that sent a chill down my spine. I hate a creak. I froze. My front door was slightly ajar. Panic set in and I immediately regretted not double checking if I locked it. I hesitated debating whether or not to investigate or call the police but curiosity got the better of me and against my better judgement I tiptoed towards the door it swung open with a soft groan revealing an eerily quiet house I heard a noise upstairs like footsteps oh. my heart pounded as I realised someone was inside my home fear gripped me but I forced myself to stay calm I retreated to a closet my breath caught in my throat praying they wouldn't find me from my hiding spot I could hear the intruder moving through the room searching for something the tension was unbearable I clutched my phone ready to call for help when I heard a noise from downstairs it was a door slamming shut oh I strained to listen, and my blood ran cold as I heard the unmistakable sound of a scream echoing through the night. My mind raced, and I realised the intruder hadn't found me, but had moved on to my neighbour's house. Guilt and relief washed over me in equal measure. I couldn't believe the horrifying turn of events. I stayed hidden until I was sure it was safe, and then, with shaky hands, I called the police. When they arrived, I explained what had happened. The reality hit me like a ton of bricks when they went next door. My neighbour, a kind elderly couple, had been brutally attacked. The scene was something out of a nightmare. It wasn't a random break-in. The intruder had specifically targeted them. The investigation unfolded and the police caught the perpetrator. It turns out he had a twisted motive and had mistaken my house for theirs. It's a chilling realisation that I narrowly escaped a fate that befell my neighbours. The guilt still lingers, wondering if there was anything I could have done differently. The randomness of it all, the fact that a simple twist of fate saved my life that night is a haunting thought. It's a reminder that danger can lurk in the most unexpected places and sometimes survival is just a matter of luck. So there you have it. The night I narrowly avoided a killer but couldn't prevent the tragedy that unfolded next door. Life can be stranger and scarier than any horror movie. Stay safe, everyone. Oh. And, uh, you know, too true. Too, too true. true. Too true. Life is absolutely fucking terrifying. Give me a ghost over and over to Gus and Electric Bill any day. Lucky. Um, okay. Do you want us to do all right? Yes, please. Okay, this one is called My Friend Has a Camera that will show you your last photograph before you die. Everyone dies at some point. No. 
And with that reality comes cold, hard facts. You will have a last kiss, a last hug, a last phone call and a last photograph. On Friday night, we met up at Casey's house. Have you ever heard a more American name than Casey? Casey. Quiet, I, quiet Casey. I haven't. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Casey features Maybe quite Maybe this bit. is quiet Casey. On Friday night, we met up at Casey's house. Even though she has an annoying neighbour, her parents built this amazing fire pit that's the perfect spot for chilly autumn nights. Oh, gorgeous. I know, a fire pit, bit of wine. <laughs> we like alkies. After starting the fire and roasting some marshmallows, she brought out something I haven't seen in at least a decade. A disposable camera. Ah, old school, I want one. Yeah, but they are fucking creepy. I'm going to get one. You know, like, um, I heard the story about a um, serial killer who took loads of photos of his victims and then, like, sent his disposable camera in to get... What's the word? Processed? Processed. Developed. 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 Thank God for that. Um, and imagine what those... Imagine what people who develop photos see. That's some weird <sighs> you shit. you ever watch 24-hour photo? Is that the one with Robin, Robin Williams? Williams? Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh. Very. Creepy. I'm gonna get one. Can you, you? You used to be able to get them from Boots, but yeah, I think you just order them online. You get, but you can get a job lot on Amazon. Oh, a job lot. Job lot. <laughs> job lot. You can get a job lot. Get a job lot, love. <laughs> um, <clears throat> this is a special camera, Casey said with a grin. Apparently, when you take a photo, it'll be your last photo before you die. Oh, it's cursed. I sat there trying to digest what she was saying. You mean? The camera kills you? Yeah, like that ghost. So the camera kills you. Yeah, like that one Goosebumps book, Brady replied. Say Say cheese and and die. die. Oh my God, I loved that one, Maribel said, grinning. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Casey held her hands up, clearly annoyed that we didn't get it. Everyone has a last photo before they die. Like, for example, my grandpa. Three days before he passed away, he went on a fishing trip. The last photo on that trip is the last photo that was ever taken of him. Well, it's impossible for a camera to show that, I replied. It would have to be a time-travelling camera for that to work. <laughs> you guys are no fun. Casey rolled her eyes and started putting the camera back in her bag. Wait, wait, we didn't say we didn't want to use it, Maribel said. Yeah, it could be fun, I added. A wicked smile flashed on Casey's lips. Okay, good. Who wants to be the first? (laughs) Brady raised his hand. I'll go. That was Brady for you. Never missed a chance to impress the girls. He stood up, his face lit by the roaring fire. Where should I stand? Apparently he's from Yorkshire. (laughs) Where shall I stand? The lighting's kind of harsh. Maybe by that tree? Brady walked several several feet away from the fire and stood next to the tree. Then he leaned against it, crossed his arms and raised an eyebrow. Casey raised the camera to her face. Three, two, one, cheese! Click. White light flashed across the dark backyard. Brady stepped away from the tree, grinning. Okay, who's next? Casey asked. I'll go, Maribel said. She pushed her glasses up her nose and stood next to the tree, somewhat awkwardly. Casey lifted the camera to her face again and took a photo. Click! The ratcheting sound of her rewinding the film filled the air. Okay, Benny, your turn. She said, shooting me a smile. I walked over to the tree, took off my baseball cap and waited. Casey lifted the camera to her face and then frowned. Can't you smile? Nope. Ugh, fine. Click. She rewound the camera. She rewound the film and handed the camera to me. Then she posed next to a tree in a classic sorority squat pose. I've got no idea what that is. I'm going to go with this. Oh, yeah. Yours? Yeah, mine. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god, I do the sorority squat. <laughs> of course I do. Okay, give me ten sorority squats. <laughs> Casey and I had just started dating, <laughs> but the longer things went on, the more doubts I was having. <laughs> sure, we looked good in pictures, a classic football star, cheerleader match. In reality, we weren't either of those things. She was pretty, but extremely insecure, jealous and high maintenance. Oh, jeez. I was a neurodivergent math nerd who just happened to look out genetically and look like a jock. I stared at her through the viewfinder, her form slightly distorted. Click. Hey, you didn't count down, she whined. What, you were posing? I want to know exactly when the photo has been taken, that's all. Okay, sure. I rewound the camera and handed it back to her. She sidled up next to me and lowered her voice. Hey, when um, Brady and Maribel leave, 
Uh, do you want to stay for a little bit after? <laughs> oh. Oh. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I was like, meow. It's like you swallowed a cat. What <laughs> is cat? What is that is cat? Is that cat? Oh, I don't know. My dad's renovating the kitchen and he wants me to help him in the morning. It doesn't have to be for long. Just a little while. Come on, Benny. <laughs> Come on, Benny. I should have just said no, but she was pushing for a finger in and I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it's a finger in. Oh, come on, Benny. Just come play. On, just finger. Play a bit. Forgot finger in is the funniest word. No, it's ridiculous. Ever. It's so funny. Um, it's not sexy at all, yeah, but digit. it's absolutely hilarious. Digit me. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't have to be long, just for a little while. <laughs> I should have said no, but she was pushing and I felt bad saying no. Okay, just for half an hour. Sounds good to me. We can watch something down in the basement. My parents can't hear a thing down there. What about your neighbour? He seemed really mad when we were watching V for Vendetta. Great film. He said the explosions woke him up. Remember, he's pounding on the glass and yelling at us. She rolled her eyes. So we'll keep the volume down. Come on, it's just half an hour. We don't even have to watch anything. Okay. Mm, saucy. Saucy. Before I could say more, she grabbed the camera and started towards the fire pit. I followed. When are you going to get those developed, Brady asked. We could go tonight. There's still a one-hour photo in the CVS on Route 14, Maribel replied. And we could pick up some snacks. Wait, seriously? They still develop photos? Casey asked. Mm-hmm. My dad uses them for, like, passport photos and other stuff. So it was decided. The four of us piled into Brady's car and took off into the night. We spent the entire hour hanging out at the store, picking out snacks. Then Casey went up to the counter, grabbed the paper envelope and led us back out to the car. We piled inside and Brady turned on the lights. She flicked open the envelope and pulled out the photos. No fucking way. The first photo showed an older man standing on a beach. Grey hair, dripping wet, blue waves rolling behind him. But with his square jaw and tall build, he looked just like an aged up Brady. But it's impossible said. Not necessarily, Maribel replied after a pause. <clears throat> the camera looked like a disposable camera, but it's possible someone put a cheap microchip in there, like a mini Raspberry Pi. I've got no fucking idea what that is. Mini what? Raspberry Pi? Like, I think it's like a, 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 a microchip. A bit of tech. A bit, a bit of tech. A bit of tech. A bit of tech that we silly girls Is that tech? Stand. Yeah, fucking, I think so. Um, then it took our photos, and with the help of AI, I, uh, like, aged us, aged us up or something. <laughs> with the help of AI, aged them up. Yeah, but how would the CVS develop them, I asked. Maybe it was straightforward. Maybe when he opened the camera to get a film, there was a USB stick in there. <laughs> Instead, loaded up with the images, so he just stuck it in the computer and printed them out. Maybe. It's weird, but Amazon is full of weird shit like this. I once saw a karaoke machine that used AI to auto-tune everyone as soon as they were singing in real time. Oh, I'd love one of those. I don't need one. I'm an excellent singer. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean? You've what already you mean, admitted please? that that isn't true. What do you mean, please? You've said yourself. No, I'm a dreadful. <laughs> um, we could go back inside and ask them, I suggested. I want to see the rest of the photos first, Casey says, nearly cutting me off. Where'd you get this camera from again? Maribel asked. A friend gave it to me. And with that vague response, she flipped to the next photo. It was a family Christmas photo. Several people standing in front of a tree, happy faces lit by multicoloured lights. But my heart dropped when I saw the woman on the left. A woman, maybe 30, holding a little baby, with the same heart-shaped face, the same curly dark hair as Maribel. It's Maribel. Oh no, she said, her eyes wide. I can't do that. I do little eyes. <laughs> Is Hannah shocked? <laughs> Who knows? I don't even know if I'm awake half the time, let alone shocked. We all stared at the photo, silently unsure what to say. But then I saw it. In the middle of the photo, sitting on the couch, was an old woman. A very old woman. With skin so wrinkled it looked like crepe paper. And hair so white it looked like a tuft of cotton candy on her head. Wire-framed glasses were perched on her nose. I think that's you. Maribel snatched the photo out of Casey's hands. Whoa, she whispered, studying it up close. For all our big talk about this being some AI thing, she seemed to take it pretty seriously. As I watched Maribel, I couldn't help but smile. For a second, I felt something, a sense of awe as I looked at her face, lighting up with the joy of her family. I'd never looked at Maribel as anything other than a friend, but... 
There was something tugging at my heartstrings. Now. Oh, he fancies, he fancies Maribel. Maribel. She's definitely up his street more like, Casey seems like a bit of a dick. Yeah, Casey's obviously like the most popular girl at school. Yeah, but like really insecure, really like, oh, I need to get the perfect photo. She's just yeah. like, and Maribel's just like, whatever. She's a bit of a laugh. Yeah, and she reads you Goosebumps. Know? And she reads Goosebumps. <clears throat> Uh, there was something talking at my heartstrings now. Not even something I could put into words as a crush or attraction, just something. A flicker of connection, an emotion, or... Benny? I glanced at Casey, and then I looked down. In her hands was the photo she'd taken of me. The exact same photo of me tonight. Holding my baseball cap, standing next to the tree, not smiling, staring straight ahead, eyes red from the flash. Oh dear, sweet Cost. Lord, <laughs> and... sweet Jesus, desire, <laughs> sweet Jesus, on high, Jesus, <laughs> all things bright and beautiful, Mary Magdalena. <laughs> ah! Oh God. <laughs> Oh dear. <clears throat> but as Casey, Brady and Maribel stared at me with horror, I realised. So it's saying, the picture you took of me tonight is the last picture of me alive. I guess so, Casey said. The silence pressed in. I shook my head and forced a laugh. Come on, this is just some stupid prank camera. Like Maribel said, it's some AI thing. Maybe it even purposely skips some people just to scare them. But none of them were laughing. Okay, come on, let's look at Casey's. I plucked my photo from the stack and froze. Casey was sitting on the floor of someone's basement. Her hands were tied to a metal support pole. Oh my God. With thick rope, a strip of duct tape had been placed over her mouth. The left side of her head was matted with blood and a thin trail tri dripped down the side of her face. Her blue eyes were wide with fear and looking straight at whoever was taking the photo. This is some sick fucking prank. Oh, Brady mutters. <laughs> <laughs> Brady screamed. Muttered Dumbledore. <laughs> Do not put your name in a goblin of fire! This is some sick fucking prank. <laughs> Brady muttered, his voice low with anger. <laughs> <laughs> Casey just sat there, frozen. Let's go home, Maribel said. Forget all this stuff, it's just a prank, like Brady said. But Casey didn't move. She just sat there, the photo shaking in her hands, her blue eyes wide with fear. What's wrong? Maribel asked softly. The basement, she said, finally pointing at the photo. I recognise it. My dad and I went over there one time. He needed help with the fuse box. I thought he was annoying, but... Casey, whose basement is it? I asked. My neighbours. But hang on. Casey's not alive. Yeah. But that's the last photo taken of her. Yeah, because, you know, they were like, we're going to get rid of Maribel and, and Yeah, but and you wouldn't go. Clearly. Yeah, you wouldn't, no. Well, you're not going to go to that fucking basement no, if you but, see yourself. Um... No, they were never going to go to the basement. So when's that photo taken then? So what they're saying is, Benny and Maribel will go. Yeah. And then when they've gone, they're going to they're gonna get kidnapped by the neighbour and he's going to kill Benny and he's going to fucking kill her as well, but she's going to be. Oh, I see. She's so going to be if... kidnapped by him. So they're now, if that story they're was like, to carry on... They're like, we're going to get kidnapped. You're going to get, so... Yeah, well, they better, well, I hope wherever they are, they're, they're working on sorting that out. Well, <laughs> well, I hope wherever they are, because if that was me, you would change your fate, wouldn't you? You'd be like, right, I'm going into survival Yeah, mode. it's one of those things, though, that's like, you know, if your number's up, your number's up. So would you whatever know, no, no. happens. Disagree. If, if you saw I mean, that... I would try and do whatever I could to stop it from happening, obviously. I'd get a gun. Oh my god! It's you are obsessed with guns. Oh yeah, that's me, is it? You're obsessed. When we're alone, Miss, when we're not Miss recording, Trigger Happy, when we're not fucking recording, TV Susie gets there. a glass of wine and she's like, "Do you know? I Cop know I gun. talk about this all the time." She goes, "I know I talk about this all the time, but I just <laughs> love guns." And I and love the, the colour brown. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, Jan. Um, brown is literally the colour of your top. It's literally not. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Brown! 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 <laughs> anyway, we've just probably burst some air drums, you well key. Sorry. Um, no, if that was me, yeah. I am arming myself, 
getting in the car. Okay. I am. I'm getting my passport. Yeah, no, you would know yet, but it, I mean, it's not going to be a great. Because if you know where that basement is, your job right now is get the fuck also, away we've... from that basement and get away from ev- like everyone else. And also, you don't know whether Maribel or Brady are the killer. Um, because you don't, you can't well, trust anything. It's the neighbour, isn't it? Because they're in the neighbour's basement, so it's probably. Well, they're the not neighbor. there. They're not in the basement right now, though. <laughs> no. But they will be. They won't be. They will be. They won't be. I don't know what we're talking about. We don't usually um, take apart the stories, but today apparently is a new day. What? Have, what a theme. We were all on cameras. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> okay. Would you like another star? Oh, this is a goodie. Okay. You know how you start to do the most random things when you're bored out of your mind? Yeah. A year ago, boredom found me trying to access my old Yahoo email and somehow getting in. Do you remember Yahoo? Oh, uh, don't fucking talk to me about trying to get into another, your old email account because I have spent hours. Yeah, yes. I had an old Hotmail account and I'm gutted that yeah. I've lost it. It's Mine... obviously been deactivated, but there's so much good shit in there. Mine used to be Hannah underscore S underscore two and that's because... When I made um, the Hotmail account, I thought I was going to get married to Charlie from Busted. Oh, that was every girl's dream, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah, he was the best. Um, <clears throat> uh, access my old Yahoo email and somehow getting in. I was hit with a wave of nostalgia upon seeing the updates and notifications of old games like Neopets, Maple Story, and Club Penguin. As I scrolled down, I noticed that there was a bunch of emails in the spam inbox. Oh, I love these. Mm, curious. We've got some great ones on the pod. Have you looked at the spam ones in the pod? No. Oh, it's really funny. You should look they, they, I do that when I'm bored. Yeah. Curious, I clicked on it and discovered that they were sent by my brother Jack 19 years ago when he went to the Arctic for a research job. Date, 4th of July, 2004. Hey, Squirt. Surprise, surprise, it's your big bro here. I hope you're reading this on the email I made you and give me a reply. I bet you don't know how to, though. Anyway, might get a kick out of this years later, so just be my diary for a while, won't you? How have you been? I know it's only a few days since I left, but I miss you guys. The Arctic is freezing and the people are cold too, pun intended. Like, I met this burly dude called Kafka, who totally ignored me when I made a joke about his name. You know Kafka's my favourite author, right? Anyway, on the bright side, there's a... Fuck off! I know, but he's like, he's young and he's like into all the, you know, it's like Kafka and Jack Kerouac and... Oh, fucking leave. On the bright side, there's a seal, Connolly. I only know Kafka because of British British Joe's diary. Canal. She's like, Kafka. Kafka's motorbike. Chechnya. Chechnya. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Kafka's motorbike. I miss rom-coms like that. Uh, There's never going to be one like it. It's on Netflix now. I I think I might watch it at some point soon. On the bright side, there's a seal colony close to the base. Blubbery as they are, they're cute as heck. I wonder if they'll let me bring one back as a souvenir. Peace. The best big bro ever. They Jack. definitely won't let you bring one back, you knobhead. <laughs> Date, 9th of July, 2004. Yo, five days in the job, baby. You, mum and dad doing okay? I wasn't getting much work at first, but the guys have entrusted me with a lot more stuff to do, mostly lab work, but that's fine. Work is better than nothing at all. The Arctic is majestic and all, but there's barely anything to do outside of work. I'm pretty sure I walked 10 laps around the research base at one point because I was so bored. The internet's bad too and only the email software works. The people here are literal zombies. It's sunny the whole day, but they act like the joy's been sucked out of them. Maybe the cold's gotten to their heads. Anyway, I'm sure that'll change when I make the biggest Arctic breakthrough. They'll be cheering in no time. Your brother's a genius after all. Cheers. I hate this guy. Genius Jack. Date, 14th of July, 2004. Hey, bro. How's the summer holidays? Did you go anywhere fun? I'm finally allowed to go on outside... I'm finally allowed to go on outside expeditions, catching seals and tagging them mostly. That's fun. There's something fucking got a sense of this or I'm in trouble with mum there's something fucking weird though some dude came to the base and the people are all happy now for some reason they call him reverend he dresses like a priest it's a cult he dresses like a priest even though it's cold as heck he seems like a nice dude but it's weird that he showed out of nowhere 
I asked around about who he was and they just told me he was a former researcher who found the truth. As for what the truth is, I got zero clue. Guess I'll play detective for a while. Catch you later, alligator. Sherlock Jack. Date. 16th of July 2004. If anyone gets into a court, I hope it's this twat. <laughs> you don't like him, do you? The doctor it's all the Kafka him. stuff. Dear little bro, how are you? Got any new crushes? I got a crush, literally. A chubby seal bit me and my arm was crushed. <laughs> Just kidding, I got a wound, but it's all bandaged up now. One of the seals we were tagging wasn't fully t sedated, so I got hurt. I'm healing up now in my room. By the way, the Reverend held a prayer session when my arm was bit. I didn't understand because it was in a language I've never heard before. Maybe I was just doped up on drugs, but all the researchers were crying. I was kind of creeped out for some reason. Anyway, stay safe. Jack. Date, 19th of July 2004. Hey, kiddo. You alright? I'm typing this with one hand. My arm's not doing too well. The colour's all off and it hurts. I'm worried it, it might have to get cut off or something. Kafka's been nursing me, but he keeps chanting something under his breath. The reverend comes by and they whisper to each other. I keep hearing a word that sounds like Kathalfi or something. I, I don't know the language and I don't know what it means. I asked Kafka what it meant. The one under the ice was all he said before leaving the room. <laughs> Weird, right? Anyway, your bro's strong. One arm or two arms. I'm going to wrestle you to the ground when I'm back. Love you, Jack. Date. 21st of July, 2004. No more. Cold. Good night. The email dating 21st of July 2004 was the last one. Jack came back home in August, safe and sound. When I read, sorry, what I read never left my mind until I saw Jack again at a family gathering today. He was wearing a t-shirt, arms exposed, not a hint of a scar on either of them. I had to know what happened. Is your arm all right? I asked as we drank beer together on the porch. He slowly turned his head towards me, lips stretching into a tight smile. At that moment, everything about his face was just wrong to me. <laughs> exactly that. Why wouldn't it be? I looked into his eyes, deep, vacant voids of nothing. This was not my brother. I forced a chuckle. <laughs> it's really sunny today, aren't you worried about sunburn? You used to get that a lot. He's expressionless and silent for a moment, eyes boring into mine as if probing for something. I didn't realise that I was holding my breath until his features snapped back into a cold smile. I've missed you, little brother. The end. Kathouthi. Kathouthi. <laughs> if you say Thouthi, it sounds like you're saying saucy with a lisp. <laughs> oh, you're dead, Kathouthi. Yeah, saucy so so pants. <laughs> That Lovely. is grim, isn't it? Bit of illusion, love it. Um, Bit of illusion, okay. sorry. Yeah, like alluding to what's, what's going on, I love it. Oh, I see. It's very defensive. Sorry, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? No, like the, like the oh, what is it? Oh, mm, I don't know what, what happened. What do you think happened, Tanner? Um, I think um, he's been indoctrinated into a cult and he's been turned into a better person. He oh, you think like the brother that person. came back is... Far better. Even though oh, he's a bit God. like cold and yeah, fine. As long as he's not fucking making up bullshit about liking Kafka. Yeah, but he's young. He's only nineteen. Don't care. No excuse. Get them while they're young. Get replace them <laughs> while they're young. That's, that's what I say. Um, do you Just want a story? Death to Kafka. Um, okay. I would like a story, actually. Yes, please. Okay. Well, then you're going to get one. That's good, isn't it? Amy stood in front of the locker room mirrors. No, I'm what? not going to do that. Amy stood in front of the locker room mirrors, tears streaking down her face. It made her makeup slowly run down her cheeks. With her hands covering her eyes, she couldn't see her reflection, but with the other students' jeers and insults ringing in her ears, she didn't need to. Freak, they rang out. Loser. Ugly. Every time a label rose to the surface, her body trembled as she sobbed into her palms. Slut. Whore. <gasps> Amy. Harsh. Oh, these bastards. So mean. I'm going to kill them. We will. Well, we'll haunt them. As far as she cared at the moment, she would be fine if she died that day. At least she wouldn't hear the others anymore. But as these thoughts and uh, of escape began to seep into her mind, she heard the door open. Her heart stopped as she listened to the hinges creak, slowly ringing out another girl's entrance. Holding back the tears and the sobs, Amy listened, barely lifting her head up to try and see the person in the mirror. 
but the only thing she saw was her ugly, weak, pathetic reflection. Don't say that about yourself, Amy. Come on. Come on, Amy! These thoughts cut her deeply, slicing through her heart, but as they cut, they released her other emotion. Rage. Anger began to course into her veins, warming her body, gradually burning away her pain and replacing it with hate. And the, mo- the more she stared back into... And the more she stared into her black, makeup-smeared eyes, the more the anger filled her body and the more her thoughts transformed into thoughts of homicide. Oh, dear. Why kill herself when she could kill a van? Fair enough. Mm -hmm. As the new and more pleasant thoughts bubbled up from her soul, Amy began to hear something behind her. It was low, quiet and distant. It wasn't the sound of a happy girl or of a girl ready to leave for the day. This was laughter. Cold, dark and evil and with it came fear and panic that began to slide over her body wrapping her and covering her hate and pain cold sweat broke out over her forehead as paralysis bound her legs for this wasn't the laughter of a girl but of a man hang on where is she is she she's in, at the school in the school bathroom she's in the school bathroom yeah and she's killing a man's oh. laughing oh, it's not good is it? it's not good in any way perf. <gasps> perf. then just as the laughter had started it left disappearing into thin air the next sound Amy heard was the closing of the door and the deadbolt sliding into place. Oh my God, that fucking scared me. She was trapped. And just when the immediate panic was starting to lift, leading her to run, all the lights in the room disappeared. Cast- yeah, yes, casting her into an abyss. One sound rang in that cold, dark room. The sound of heavy, rhythmic footsteps making their way to <laughs> It's like Acorn Antiques. It's like we're trying to start a fucking a cappella band. Ah. To say that Amy was no longer angry would be a lie in the same way that saying she was no longer hurt or sad. She was still in pain from the curses of the, of the other students and her hate towards them was still burning in her veins. But both had been almost completely compressed by her state of fear and panic. Her heart was racing well past any rate that exercise could get it to, but all of the energy she would have needed to get it there was now gone. Each step of the stranger's feet sucked the breath from her body, and the willingness to run was taken with it. Thoughts of death began to float back into her head, but no longer of suicide or homicide, but of her own death. Images is of the... Images of that... Images is a Images of her lifeless, bloody corpse tucked into some corner of the locker room seeped into her imagination and she was terrified. Amy, a voice called. Amy jumped and screamed for the voice did not come in front of her, but from behind. Spinning around furiously, she could see nothing. Energy had found its way back into her legs, but her panic kept it from being used to run. Instead, she continued to turn, looking for the voice. Amy. It called again. Still behind her. The footsteps had stopped, and so had she. Amy, I'm right here. The voice was quiet, small and straight ahead of her now. Blinking from the sudden swarm of light, Amy could just make out her own reflection. But something wasn't right. Above her head was a foggy figure. Her breath caught in her throat as she saw what it really was. The intruder's face. His hair was black with red streaks, and over his face he wore a black mask that covered everything except his eyes. It sounds like a member of KISS, doesn't it? The band. <laughs> Campus thing you've ever said. <laughs> yeah. The way you said doesn't it. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Um, bright yellow eyes stared back into hers, making her feel open, exposed and naked. She wanted to scream, but nothing came from her mouth. And she didn't dare run, because if he was that close, she knew she wouldn't make it anywhere. She'd just die tired. It's a really good point. Mm. Hello, Amy. Amy could now clearly hear the voice. But it wasn't what she was expecting. <laughs> it was Alan Carr. <laughs> Hiya, Amy, you're right. <laughs> Hello, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Interior design master. Very good. <laughs> it was low, cold and distant. <laughs> Same, not again. It didn't sound like it belonged to the figure now standing in front of her. He looked like his voice would be deep and dark. Even though this person's true voice was dark, it wasn't what she was expecting. There was something about his eyes that unnerved her too. It wasn't their colour, but there was something about them that she didn't like. Like the way one could go outside and know, just know, something horrible was about to happen. After a long silence, Amy spoke. Who, who, 
up and down the last of her immediate fear, she finished. Who are you? The figure answered with a low, long breath of laughter. Ha, ha, ha. That's good, wasn't it? Yeah. It floated around her head and chilled her bones. This is a good question, Amy, and I promise you will explore that later. Oh. For now, at least tell me something. What can I do for you? This is a bit sexy, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It's like, a bit sexy. Mm. Okay, it's like a balaclava teacher. Yeah. It's the PE teacher in a black mask. Yeah, it's fit, isn't it? Um, what do you mean? The figure snickered. I mean, exactly what you're thinking. I can help you if you like. Help you get rid of them. Help you get rid of them. Amy shivered. You don't need to run. I'm not here to hurt you. Amy was confused. But why are you here? Amy. Dear, dear Amy. She felt a hand slowly lay itself across her shoulders. I'm here for your revenge. Revenge. The words were said with enthusiasm, like a little kid on the night of Christmas. What are you going to do? <laughs> Me? Oh dear Amy. I'm just a ghost. What? She thought she heard the sound of falling metal, but she couldn't be sure. What do you mean? It was too late because as she turned around, the lights came on. She was alone once more. However, her eyes noticed something on the floor, not too far from where the figure appeared to be standing. Carefully walking out, whoop. carefully walking over, she bent over to examine the instrument. Placing a hand around the handle of the large wicked knife, she heard the figure's voice. The choice is yours, Amy. Kill them or yourself. It's up to you. Deal or no deal. What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the box? <laughs> um, it's a carry situation, isn't it? So Voices she, in the heads, carry situation, looking in the mirror. It's a bit freaky. So she's been, so a, a knife has been materialised. Yes, yeah, that was the clank. That was the so clank. So just fell out of the air. So it's all real. When Her you said instrument, I thought she was going to like clob, play clobber the them all with a guitar or something. <laughs> Death by violin to the head. <laughs> Stop playing the accordion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you got a game? Welcome to We, we Get, Get Haunted. Haunted, so you don't have to. That is fucking horrible. <laughs> we oh, Get Haunted. I don't know if I could. And I sound like I've got a cold. I'm going to haunt Hannah. Oh, you sound like salad fingers. Oh. I just sounded like Gretchen from Recess. Oh, Gretchen. Ha I got the hot chow. Just, um... <laughs> I got the hot chow. <laughs> hot chow, hot chow, hot chow. So, Gretchen was my Hermione Granger for uh, all, all the years I read Harry Potter. Oh, my... you imagined it? Yeah. yeah oh, my God. Same. I thought um, Hermione was Hermione 1 <laughs> for seven years. Hermione 1. Well, Hermione my one. grandma was called Hermione. That's the Greek way of saying it. Fuck so off. for ages, I was like, "Ah, oh, Hermione, Ron, and Harry," and everyone was like, "Oh, uh, yeah." I and then you were I got, a fucking yeah, idiot. They, they, I didn't get bullied for it, but people laughed. Yeah. And then Hermione, I got a big was violin. Thing that I thought it could have. I was like, it's either Hermione or Hermione one. Not sure which. Hermione never entered my head. Okay. Um. So, uh, this is. <laughs> a little game that I got from Mama Moon's Book of Magic. Oh, lovely. And it's a game where you're going to pick three cards from Gorge. a pack of cards. Now, this pack of cards, um, <laughs> these are the. this is it's like treasured in, in the priest's household. They're called oh. Poker Alice. Now, if we had an icon to look up to, it's Poker Alice. Really? She She's is. Got a look cigar at that. In her mouth. She's got a massive that. cigar on. She's got her hair tied in a cool bun. And I do like a cigar on New Year's Eve. Do you? Yeah, I like a little cigar. I reckon that's going to be you. Oh, I'd love that. Last photo taken. Oh, gorge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, wearing red. <gasps> Hannah. Oh, that... my God. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that is me. It's you. Oh, wait, freaky. Yeah. Little eyes. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No eyes are quite... Little tiny piss holes. Anyway, so thank you, Poker Alice. We're going to pick... Uh... So you can't lose those? No. Imagine if you did. You wouldn't have anywhere to live. Oh, I'd be cast out on my little butthole. <laughs> butthole. My little butthole. So, so what have I got to do? Um, bear with me at this time. <laughs> <laughs> my thoughts are with you at this very troubling time. My thoughts are with you time. right now at this time. Okay, so... I want you to pick three cards. Oh, okay, so that one's for me. There. And then we've got that one. Put the first one down first. I'm oh, sorry. Then the second. 
that one. This is exciting. Premium mm. beer. Is, is, is Alice a beer brand? I don't know. I think that we should probably order some. It says Alice Ivers, i.e. Poker Alice, who lived from 1851 to 1930. Legend. I'd like to do a seance where we try and speak to her. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, so, Hannah, this is called the three-card spread. Yeah. Ooh. Yum. Um, if you're doing a three-card spread, pull out three cards, lay them down left to right. Yeah. Done this that. is going to signify your past, your present, and your future. Oh, like a tarot. So, exactly that. So, what I'd like you to do is pick your first one and tell me what it is. Oh, it's a jack. No, that's yes. good. Is it I good? Think. Well, that's my past, so we don't really care about it. <laughs> okay, it says here, your past. A dynamic younger person has good ideas yeah. that might be able to assist with your manifestations. Yeah. Too true, mate. Do you think? Yeah, bang who's, on. Who was your younger person? Oh, it meant me. Mm, I suppose it could. It's myself. Yeah, I like that. But it says has good ideas that might be able to assist with your manifestations. Yeah, because it was like it was all in the run. Like I had ideas, I wanted to do things, I never did, and then eventually now it's happening. Oh, I love that. Okay, your Next. present, please. The king. <gasps> King of Diamonds. Jesus. This is very diamondy for if you. This is the Queen of Diamonds because that was totally. That random. is. Then you should win a gambling advert. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> King of Diamonds. Oh, Hannah. This is great. What? Is this now? This is your. This okay. is your present. King of Diamonds. This guy's a success. <laughs> <laughs> he may be an entrepreneur. Yeah, yes. He is confident and ambitious. Why is it always a he? A loyal friend. Someone you can depend on, a mentor, well respected. Oh, come on. Let's be having you. <laughs> Honestly. Are you ready for the next one? And then oh, your this is future. Be terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Just to balance Ace. It. Ace of clubs. Interesting. We've gone we've gone up each one though, haven't we? If ace is high. This is all about learning new things as you will be adding strings to your bow. Oh. Oh, well, that's good, isn't it? Isn't it? it? It's just going to get better and better. You're just going to be learning, oh, developing. Listen, I'm absolutely thrilled. Hannah, you're going to be hoeing. I'm a be hoeing. Yeah. And on that note, thank you so much for joining us this week on Ghost Hunt. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so, so. You know what? In my back of my head, then I could just do the music. Because we're conditioned. <laughs> Don't forget to get on um, Patreon. Patreone. Um, we've got, we've, we've really amassed the, the problem solving. Um, oh, listen. The idea is listen. we have a wine, we sit in a pub and we just put the worlds to rights. We have a wine. Worlds yes. to rights? We, uh, we solve your problem. It's not, world to rights. World to rights. We have a wine, we solve your problems, we do book club, we do a ghost hunt. It is all there, yeah. ready and waiting for you on Patreon. You'd be there mad is about 50 episodes. There's yes. more than 50 episodes. 50 hours of content from these guys. And what do you think of those of you who have signed up, we bloody love you. Ah, you Thank you so stunning. much. Um, and enjoy the chaos. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We will bye. see you next week. Bye, 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 bye. We be home on time.